in Bible study. You'll have another person teach in Bible study, but the Lord laid it on my heart to, to, to teach. And when I come back and, and resume this position, I, I will continue. This is not just a one night class, amen? But I am led to teach about what we believe, amen? Um, it's on our, our website. What we believe is on our website. If you want to get a good idea, those of you who don't know or not are familiar with what, um, we, what we believe, I'm going to read it to you tonight, what we believe. But if you would like a copy, you can go to the website and print it down, copy it, or if you can't do that and you would like a copy, ask me and I will be happy to, to get you one. Amen? Amen. So here it is. Who we are, what we believe. Greater Light Church and Ministries, Inc. is a full gospel apostolic or apostolic organization dedicated to the teaching and preaching of the word of God inspired by the original King James text. Amen. Our mission statement is, we are focused on the necessary priorities of actively involving ourselves in the communities wherein we worship and live, providing leadership, counsel, assistance when called upon by those who might look to us in time of need. Greater Light Church and Ministries, Inc. is a focused and directed ministry intent on spreading the word of God wherever and whenever an opportunity can be made to share the truth of who God is. Greater Light intends to lead by example, work diligently, and preach tirelessly in our effort to be a shining example among the multitudes that have been called to do his work. We are a church organization focused on the mandate set before us by God, our responsibilities are to God and to the people for whom he gave his life. That is our mission statement. What we believe. <clears throat> We believe there is only one God made manifest in three authorities. We believe God gave Jesus a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. What does the Bible say about itself? We believe the Bible is the inspired, infallible, and, all, and unalterable word of God written by holy men of God who were moved by the Holy Ghost. Second Peter 1.21. What does the Bible say about water baptism? 
we believe in baptism by immersion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and baptism of the Holy Ghost with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. This constitutes the new birth. Acts 2.38, 1 Peter 16.16, 16, Romans 6 and 4, John 3 and 5. What does the Bible say about God? We believe in one God, infinite in power, holy in nature, attributes and purpose, omniscient, omniscient and omnipresent. We believe God was revealed to us as father in redemption, son in, I'm sorry, father in creation, father in creation, son in redemption, and as Holy Spirit in his comforting grace that never leaves those that trust in him. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, Psalm 62, verse 11, Matthew 28, 18, Isaiah 40, 13 through 17. What does the Bible say about Jesus? We believe in Jesus dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Colossians 2, verse 9, 1 Timothy 3, 16, 1 Corinthians 5, 19. What does the Bible say about Jesus' birth? We believe at his birth that Jesus was both human and divine, the very God manifested in flesh. John 1, 10 and 14, Matthew 18, 24. What does the Bible, I'm sorry, what does, yes, what does the Bible say about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection? We believe in the literal death, burial, and bodily resurrection of Jesus. We believe he ascended on high and has sent his spirit, the spirit which was poured out at Jerusalem over 1900 years ago, as it's still filling. He's still filling us with the Holy Ghost. The heart of those who diligently seek him today. I'm going to read that again. We believe he ascended on high and has sent his spirit, the spirit which was poured out at Jerusalem over 1900 years ago and is still fill in the hearts of those who diligently seek him today. Acts chapter 10, 39 to 40, 
13, Acts chapter 13, 26 through 39. Amen. That's who we are and what we believe. God bless you. I am, I am going to attempt as the, the weeks and months go forth to teach this what we believe in its entirety. Tonight, I am going to start with, we believe there is only one God made manifest in three authorities. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as I come before your people this evening, I ask you, God, to strengthen me, use me, open the hearts and minds of your people, and let them absorb your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. I have many, many, many scriptures tonight. And um, <clears throat> if you have your Bibles and you would like to read along with me, you are welcome to do so. Amen. So there. I'm sorry. We believe what we believe, part one. We believe there is only one God made manifest in three authorities. God the Father, who is God. God the Son, Jesus Christ, who is God. God the Holy Spirit, who is God. All three are one. Let me bring it home a little closer to you. I am a mother. I have three biological children. I was married. I was a wife. I'm still a wife. I was married to one of the greatest men that walked the face of the earth. So that made me a wife. I am a sister because I believe I have two of my sisters on the line tonight. I'm not sure, but I think they are. I'm a sister because my mother had seven children. So I am, I am a sister. I am a pastor because I am your pastor. God had, has allowed me that privilege to be your pastor. I am all those people, but I am one. You can't separate me from them. I am them. I am one with them. Amen. So God the Father is God, just like Joyce Hackett is your pastor. Joyce Hackett is Jeffrey Carlin Sammy's mother. Joyce Hackett has six siblings, amen? But I am Joyce Hackett. I don't know why it's so difficult for some of us to understand that, that process. He was God in creation. He was son in redemption. He is Holy Spirit in regeneration, comforting grace. His name is Jesus.
by him and through him, the Holy Ghost came to regenerate us and make us new. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of God. Jesus is the son of God and God is God and Jesus to us is his name. He was father, he was son, and he was the Holy Ghost. And his name is Jesus. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is not his name. There are manifestations of him, but that's not what his name is. You can call me mother if you want. You call me pastor and I answer. My children call me, some of you call me mom and I answer. My sisters have all kinds of cute little names for me. And not to mention my husband, he used to call me some of everything. But if you want a correct response, my name is Joyce Hackett. I fulfill and I work in all those capacities as I have as I have called before. They are not separate. They are one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost is one. To us Gentiles, his name is Jesus. To the world today, his name is Jesus. God has many other names. He does, he does, he has a whole lot of them. But tonight I am talking about Jesus. the one who died for me on Calvary, the one who God sent to redeem me, wash my sins away through baptism, going down in the watery grave of baptism and coming up to walk in the newness of life. That's the Jesus in Jesus' name. He has a name. The Bible says, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't say do it in the name. He didn't say do it in Father, do it in Son, or do it in Holy Ghost. He said do it in the name. His name is Jesus Let me read 1 Timothy. I'm just going to be going through the scriptures tonight. And I'll start with 1 Timothy 2 and verse 5. If you want to follow me, for there is one God. I didn't write it. The Bible is the inspired word of God. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. Who is that? The man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. There is only one God. I 
want you to remember because there's so many false doctrines and false, so much falseness going on in the world today. Oh my goodness, I could talk about falseness. But there's only one God. And for us, he's our mediator. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. One God. Let me read this again. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. In other words, he makes intercessions for us. He, he, he makes, he makes, he, he goes to God for us. We go to God through him. That's what we do. We go to God through him. He mediates for us. He's in the middle. He's between the God. He's a sacrifice. He makes, he makes intercession for us. He is a mediator. We go, go in his name. To God, Jesus, his name. We pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We go to God through him because he's our mediator. He is our mediator. We go to Father God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our next scripture is John. John 10, verse 30. Listen to this one. All, all, all of you who are, who are not sure, because there are some who are not sure. And the time is going to come when you have to be sure. The time is here where you have to be sure. It says, I and my father, this is Jesus talking. He said, I and my father are one. I don't know why there are those out there trying to separate them. They are one. Jesus, the son of God is saying, I and God, my father, are one. We pray in his name, Jesus. We baptize in his name, Jesus. If we need a miracle, we call his name, Jesus. He said, I and my father are one. You know what? We serve a great, big, wonderful God. A great, big God. He is everything to us. He is our everything. You name it, he is that to us. He's our healer, he's a deliverer, he's our, he's our comfort, he's our peace, he's our guide, he's our, he just, he just, he's everything, he's anything you want him to be. Whatever you want him to be, he will be. But you can't, he, he ain't fa his father, but that's not his name. His son, but that's not his name. You know to call father, 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 father. He has a name, his name is Jesus. And when you call his name, something happens. Thank you, Jesus. 
There will be many people, people right now are, are telling people that Jesus is not God. Oh, it's everywhere out there. Jesus is not God. People believe that. Believe that. They claim to believe the Bible, but they don't believe Jesus is God. How you get that? I don't understand it. But those people, as the scripture says, those people are on the road to hell if they don't change their ways or change their belief because Jesus is God. Yes, he is. My other scripture is John 8. John 8. Um, let's see. Ah, uh, let's see, John 18. That's not it. Let me see. Let me find my, just give me a moment to find the scripture. Um, John. John eight fifty eight. Die in their sins. John eight. This is not the one I am um, I'm looking for, but John eight fifty eight, John eight twenty three. Let's read John eight. Let's read John eight twenty three and twenty four. And he said unto them. Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I say therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins if, for if ye believe not that I am he, that's the scripture I'm looking for, because if, if, as it said, many people out there saying that, um, that Jesus Christ is not God. The Bible says in John 8, verse 23 and 24, and he said, and he, Jesus, said unto them, ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. The devil didn't want me to find that scripture. And I've got it right here marked in my Bible. If someone listen to me or someone comes to you and tell you that Jesus is not God, 
if you don't believe that he is, you're going to die in your sins. Straight going on your way, going straight to hell. You better change your way of thinking and start worshiping God and giving him his due and believe and know that Jesus is God. He said it in his word. If you don't believe he is, you're going to die in your sins. Only, only God can remove sins. Man, 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 you won't die for my sins. You can't. Only God is capable of doing that. So what did he do, mom? He prepared a sacrifice and called his name Jesus. He, he, he prepared himself a sacrifice. Clothed himself in flesh through the Virgin Mary, called himself Jesus, live and moved and walked and, and, and commune and healed and deliver and set free and went to the cross of Calvary and died for us. Only God can't die, so he left the body of, of the sacrifice. He left the body, the flesh part. Only the flesh could die. If Jesus, if God had not taken himself out of Jesus, Jesus could not have died. Because he can't kill God. God is a spirit. But he clothed himself in humanity and he came to earth and he died for us. And then we say, he ain't God. Who oh, is Jesus? Jesus is God manifested in flesh. There's only one. Jesus and God and the Holy Ghost is one. And if you don't believe that, you're going to die in your sins. Even if there was a hundred angels that went to the cross, none of them was equipped to erase our sins. It would not have been enough. We are washed and sanctified by the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice that God chose to come to earth in so that he could cleanse us from our unrighteousness. Angels couldn't do it. The bullocks and the doves and the turtle doves couldn't do it. Only the blood of Jesus, only because the blood of Jesus, the blood of God, the sacrifice through his son, he died for us. Who dare us? Who dare those who say he is not God? If Jesus is not God, the whole gospel is a lie. Jesus is God. One of these days, you're going to have to stand up and say that. <laughs> Seriously. One of these days, you're going to have to defend the name of Jesus. We're going to have to defend the name of Jesus and tell those that um, try to tell us that he's not God. He is God. 
He is my God. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 42, verse 8. What does it say? I'll just read Isaiah 42, verse 8. It reads, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. I am the Lord. I will not give my glory to another. Jesus is God. God would not give his glory to anyone but himself. He just lived in the flesh, in the humanity. Do you believe it? If we were in the house tonight, and we had the chalkboard, this would be a participating Bible study. Do you believe Jesus is God? I am the Lord. Isaiah, God is saying, I am the Lord. I am God. And I am not giving my glory to another. He's not going to give his glory to another. So if he's not going to give his glory to another, how come Jesus had his glory? Because Jesus was God, manifested in the flesh. Whew. Help me, Jesus. Let me move right along. What time is it? Oh, Lord. He's not going to share his glory. God doesn't lie. Let's turn to, to um, John 18. John 18. John 18, 6 and 8. Don't mind, I'm just taking my time. The Jews tried to stone him. They got mad at him because he said he was God. They did. They just, they were just deliberate. They, they knew that he was different. They just could not come to the, come to, come to the place that their Messiah would come in such low estate. So they, they, didn't, they didn't accept him. John 18. And as soon as he had, they were trying to, to lay hands on him, to crucify him. And, and as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he. <laughs> they went backwards and fell to the ground. Those who came to take him to crucify him. He saw them coming and he said, whom seek, whom seek ye? Because he was God, he knew. They were trying to, 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 to bother him. And, and, and they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. They said unto him, 
And he said, the power of the almighty God that lived in the sacrifice said to him, to them, I am he. As soon then as he said, he had said unto them, I am he. They went backward and fell to the ground. Why? Because the God in him stood up and wanted to know what you want with me. Who are you seeking? He knew what they were all about. But the power that lived in him spoke to them and said, I am he. And they, they fell back, they fell on the ground. That same power sense, oh Lord, let me not get ahead of myself. That same power that spoke out of the sacrifice, that same power lives in you and I. Then asked he them again, because they fell down to the ground. And he asked them again, who are you seeking? Who are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And I think I could hear a little indignation in, in, in the voice of Jesus. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let these go their way. Who, 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 who do you say that I am? Who do we say that he is? Who do we say that he is? He's God Almighty. Jesus. Don't separate him. He is one. He's one God. One mediator. We go to God through him. Don't be misled, people. People are being misled. There is only one God. His name is Jesus. Let's, let's turn to... Oh, this is a good one. Let's go to... Let's go to John 10, 30. John 10, verse 30. One short verse. You know what it says? It says, I and my father are one. Are you going to separate Jesus from his father? They're one. I and my father are one. Let's go to Let's go to John, where am I? Let's go to John 1. John 1, 
one and two. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. The same was in the beginning with God. Who was in the beginning with God? Somebody put it in the chat. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The word that was spoken that he should come was with God in the beginning. Jesus was with God in the beginning because the word said he would come. And when the time came, the word manifested itself through the womb of Mary. Jesus was in the beginning with God. Yes. Jesus, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. The word, the manifestation of Jesus was his word that was spoken from before the foundation of the world. I could say that, yes, because before the foundation of the world, God is. And before the foundation of the world, he knew everything that was going to happen. So the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Let me go down to verse 14. And the word was made flesh. The word that was in the beginning with God became flesh. You didn't think I knew what I was saying? And the word became flesh. What word? God's word. The word became flesh. Jesus. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the father. Full of grace and truth. You may read this again. What time is it? Oh, Lord. And the word became flesh. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory of the of the only begotten of the father. Who was that? His name is Jesus. Full of grace and truth. Oh my. Let's go to John 8, 
I can't, I, I, I have to move on. I feel it bubbling up inside of me. Let's go to um, John 8, 58. Listen to this. Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. <laughs> Help me, Lord. It's 819. I've got to stop because we have prayer. Before Abraham was, I am. Who was before Abraham? God Almighty. I'm going to do one last one. I have several others, but I'm going to do one last one because my time is 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 just about is it has been up because we have to have prayer. But I want to turn. This is one that a lot of people have are con are are confused about, and and I, I have to do this one. I am led to do this one. I will, this is, as I said, this is, will continue. Let's go to, let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 28. Let me clear this up for somebody who is probably on the line or you know somebody or you need to, to clear it up with somebody. Matthew 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the earth. Note, note, for you who are confused, note what it says. It says, go ye therefore and teach all nation. That's why we baptize, because Jesus said so, and he was baptized, you know, and he's our example. We baptize in his name though, because it says, baptizing them in the name. N-A-M-E. Of. The Father. What's the name of the Father? And of the Son. What's the name of the Son? And of the Holy Ghost. His name is Jesus. When you baptize in, in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that's his titles. That is not his name. The God that we serve that says do all in the name. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus. His name. Not his titles. His name. I hope that you have gotten something from, or you're clear on what we believe. That's why we believe in Jesus. That's why we do everything in the name of Jesus. Because whatsoever we do in word and deed, when we baptize, we should baptize in the name of Jesus, that's his name. I hope that you've gotten something from these words and it is to be continued when I come back, God willing, and spare my life in a couple of weeks. I will continue this study about what we believe what we believe, why we believe, 
what we believe and why we believe it's according to the word of God coming from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. That's the Bible that we read. God bless you, Sister Petty. Amen. Thank you, Pat.